Good evening. I'm Dennis White, producer of this new local community program, Main Street Biz. Four years ago, we produced a special program on the dream of Il Cavallo, a 40-foot bronze statue originally conceived by Leonardo da Vinci and finally brought to life by Charlie Dent, a self-styled Renaissance collector. Charlie's dream became a magnificent reality at the hands of Nina Akamo in the art foundry of Talex in Beacon, New York. A dream within a dream brought to life after hundreds of years for the joy and amazement of our local community and worldwide culture. Parallax itself was a dream, my dream, of creating a continuing series of original community TV programming focused on the communities within which you and I work, reside, and relax, the communities of the Hudson Valley. We are rebroadcasting Parallax in its entirety as an introduction to what we believe is the next step in realizing the dream of community-focused original programming, Main Street Biz. Please watch this station and go to www.mainstreetbiz.biz to learn the schedule for Main Street Biz, Kingston, Beacon, and Fishco, our communities in focus. Thank you. Buongiorno from Milan, Italy. I am Dennis White, owner and producer of a new video magazine, Parallax, focusing on the Hudson Valley. Webster defines Parallax as a different line of sight, a different point of view on the same object. Parallax will focus on the issues, people, places, and events throughout the next year that occur in the Hudson Valley. The question then arises, why Milan? The answer, El Cavallo. El Cavallo, cast and sculpted in Beacon, New York. El Cavallo, the dream and life energy behind the horse and its sculpture. El Cavallo, a tribute to the genius of Leonardo da Vinci. Tonight, from San Siro Hippodrome in Milan, Italy, Parallax, views on El Cavallo. <laughs> Make your world go away. If you have been seriously injured through someone else's carelessness, we can help. The difference is at Feldman, Clyman and Coffee, your personal attorney is leading our team working on your behalf. From the start, we pay all the expenses of investigating and prosecuting your claim, and we don't get paid until you do. We have a history of winning large settlements for our clients because we take your case personally and we act promptly on your behalf. And that makes all the difference. When it comes to the absolute best meats and imported foods around, Joe's Italian Marketplace stands out above the rest. They're your one-stop Italian gourmet and specialty delicatessen featuring imported pastas, cheeses, olive oils and vinegars not to mention boar's head cold cuts and fresh arthur avenue bread stop in for delicious sandwiches and a cappuccino or espresso and if you're planning a party joe's offers the most delectable and professional catering anywhere stop in and visit joe's italian marketplace in lawrence farms route 9 fishgill good evening parallax will focus on the issues places people and events of the hudson valley tonight our first issue is devoted to il cavallo an incredible journey of 500 years, a journey of dreams, faith, and realization. Our first piece is The Villager, Beacon, New York, a Hudson River city in Dutchess County, home to the Talix Foundry, stopover on the journey to Milan. <laughs> In 
In 1913, the communities of Matawan and Fishkill Landing, through legislation signed by then Governor Sulzer, merged into a city and took the name Beacon, drawing from the history of signal fires built atop Mount Beacon during the American Revolution. The mountain is Beacon's namesake and symbol, but it took a man-made enterprise, the Mount Beacon Incline Railway, to bring the city to the world's doorstep. Now, as then, the Incline Railway may symbolize the potential for a revitalized development for the city of Beacon. Beacon has always had one Main Street. It was shared by the two communities before they were united. Now, as then, Main Street is the connection. Main Street joins the city to the mountain. It connects Beacon's past with the exciting promise of its future. Today, the casual traveler to Beacon might easily believe that it is a dying city. Closed stores, boarded buildings, and factories for sale. Beacon, located on the Fishkill Creek, was home to the factories that gave hats, rubber toys, metal files, and more to the American economy of the late 1800s. The Fishkill Creek remains today, but the factories are empty. But Beacon is alive. It is resilient with dreams and growth, and Main Street again is the center of its new development. The diner has a new and charming look rem reminiscent of the 50s. Historic buildings are being restored, and Main Street boasts a new and vital retail economy. It seems preservation and development are a fever in this city that seeks to join its past with the future. The oldest house in Dutchess County is located in Beacon. It belonged to Katarina Brett, who with her sons carved out the first homestead, agriculture and business enterprise in Beacon. Not far from her house is the new Beacon Municipal Building. It is a strong symbol that Beacon is looking forward and believes in its future. In 1889, the Board of Trade of Matawan and Fishkill Landing opened Beacon for business when it published what would now be called a vision statement. Perhaps all that remains today to fulfill the promise of Beacon is the development of a similar community vision, a vision developed at all levels, including all members of the community. You can feel the excitement and the potential for this city on the Hudson. It may be the mountain or the power of this American Heritage River, but certainly the city of Beacon is about to claim its center stage position once again. No more fortuitous an event than the Il Cavallo could have captured the public's attention on this Hudson River jewel. It is at the Talix Art Foundry in Beacon where industry meets art. It is here that history was revisited and Leonardo da Vinci's dream met the dream of Charles Dent and found life in the hands and mind of Nina Akamu and the skill of the Talix Foundry. How would you describe your business? I, I like to think of it as, uh, as an extension of the artist studio. We provide a service for artists that can come in and we can produce their works for them, but it's a partnership with the artists. It's a partnership with all our clients that, that is based on um, us being able to do the work, and it's based on trust and the artists trusting us uh, to have their work, which represents their careers and their, 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 their visions. The difference between what we do here and what, what in general industry does is we do work, say, non-commercial. Non we do fine, fine art, many of the major public commissions in the last uh, of the last 20 years have been made here, including the FDR Memorial in Washington, the Korean War Memorial. This is an interpretation of uh, what Leonardo had done in 500 years ago. And it's not meant to be a copy of Leonardo da Vinci, or not meant to be a da Vinci horse. It's a, it's a modern interpretation a renaissance idea and concept. But I think that this event showed that uh, it proved of the, not only interest in this particular project, this, the horse and the concept and the idea of why this horse happened, why it's going in the line, why it was made in the first place, um, but also a community-wide involvement. This, this renaissance that's happening with Beacon. Indeed, Beacon is at the beginning of its own renaissance. After a $20 million renovation to an historic Beacon factory, the Dia Center for Arts will house its world-renowned collection of painting and sculpture in Beacon. Nina Akamu is the sculptor of Il Cavallo. We spoke with her just one week before the unveiling in Milan. I got started in September 1996. It was actually prior to that during the summer of 96, when Greg Glasson, who was the director of special projects in Talix, 
called me and said, Nina, could you come and look at a plaster model, an eight-foot model created by a man named Charles Dent and his friends. And I heard the story of Charles Dent. It was a very, very uh, delicate situation. Actually, I used the same armature. My sculpture was literally built on Charlie's sculpture. That What was left of his piece was one single armature and a kind of a sausage-shaped piece. And unfortunately, that's what remained of his sculpture. And I never intended it to be a recreation, or uh, as it's also called, a simulacrum. It is not. It's a tribute to Leonardo. And I've used the drawings as a foundation. But it's not only the visual material which I used. I used uh, Leonardo's theories. I studied quite a lot on uh, his treatise on painting. Uh, his teachers, Andrea del Verrocchio, who was, uh, had the most prolific sculpture studio in Florence during the time of the Renaissance. Um, I studied many things. And because I, what this horse became was, uh, in a sense, an amalgam of many of Leonardo's teachings. So I became a student of his. It takes a lot of discipline. I think with a, a project like that, and I was quite lucky to have a team of assistants and people who were involved with me who had that kind of dedication and that determination, that ability to focus under such difficult circumstances. I'm basically in the aesthetics area. As soon as I'm finished with it and the, the assistants are finished with the enlargement, then Talix takes over. You had, this has to have been an incredible journey for you from modeling to finish. It's been pretty long. But, uh, and I've learned quite a lot, quite a lot about myself. And I found out that I like it. I, I thrill under pressure. <laughs> I like being on the edge. Uh, I like not knowing what's going to happen, uh, especially when it comes to my work, because it, it asks me to ask even more of myself than I could have imagined. I'm excited about it. I think uh, there were so many people involved in, or in this project for so many years, and I'm I'm thrilled that the response to it is so powerful. For myself, I've spent, I've been a professional for 22 years now. And uh, I've never had another job. Sculpture is my life. But sculpture to me has been very private. I've done it in my studio. It's been my relationship with my sculpture. And to a certain extent, I, I have a reputation in this sculpture field, in the world of sculpture, for what I do. People know of it. But it's never been very important, and I've never, I've never really thought about it until suddenly this horse unveiled in Beacon. And when I was, I heard someone say, well, we're expecting 30,000 people there. And I said, where are you getting your figures from? And they said, oh, the Dutchess County Air Show and the fair. And I said, that's different. Those are airplanes. Who's going to come to see a horse? <laughs> so I was, I was quite surprised, and I was just thrilled. I was so thrilled. And I was awed. And uh, the funny thing is that, more than anything, I was humbled. That's Grand Rapids, Michigan, <clears throat> the Frederick Meyer horse for the Meyer Garden. Yeah. Same horse, different horse. Identically the same. Same size, same everything. It came out of the same mold. And there are no more molds after this. It's just the two horses. It's the twin of the Italian horse. I can't wait until that unveiling. Why? Because it's, it stays in America. And the Americans wanted so much. They were, I've never seen people cry. So many of <laughs> men, I saw men cry uh, when they saw this horse. And I'm, I'm thrilled with the Meyer Gardens taking it. It's, um, it's the culmination of so much for everybody. Now, I've only been on this project for three years, but imagine what it's like for those who knew Charlie Dent for 20 years. And for Nina, Nina has another project which is a National Japanese American Memorial, which is a national memorial for Washington, D.C. And I will be immediately uh, working on that in my studio. We are going in four days, <coughs> five days to Milan. Tell me what's going to happen there. Is this, what kind of an experience is this going to be for you? Oh, I'll go into shock. <laughs> <laughs> Make your world go away. And now, 
Il Cavallo, 500 Years to Milan. You have, you have to really know Charlie Dent to understand how this story came about. He, he was a, a guy that could just take an idea and run with it. He was a dreamer. And this idea of Leonardo's horse came about from a tiny little National Geographic article. I mean, most people would have read it, would have just passed it over. But it was two pages in a large article about Leonardo da Vinci that dealt with the horse that never was. And Charlie, having collected art and had a lot of fun sculpting during his lifetime, was fascinated by the Renaissance. And when he heard that Leonardo's horse had never been done, he got the idea that someone should have tried to do it. And then he wondered why no one had over 500 years. And in Charlie's mind, the next thing he'd do is to take the leap and say, well, I should do it. So that's what he did. Uh, 21 years ago, he started this project, saying that he thought someone for, should finish Leonardo da Vinci's horse and send it to Italy as a gift from the American people to the Italian people. And is this Leonardo's horse? No, that's the interesting thing about it. We do not claim that it's Leonardo's horse because it would be uh, almost insulting to the master to say that we've recreated his horse. What it is is a horse that is as close to his drawings as possible, sculpted by a modern sculptor, Nina Akamu, uh, to pay homage to Leonardo. Tell me about Fogelsville and Mr. Dent. This is just where Charlie retired. when He, he flew for United Airlines for 36 years, and then he bought a little farmhouse and a barn west of Allentown, Pennsylvania, where he was born and raised. And when he settled in here and he started the Leonardo Horse Project, he decided to use his own property to construct the headquarters. So that's why in the cornfields of Fogelsville, there's a 50-foot dome sprouting uh, next to an old-fashioned barn and Pennsylvania German farmhouse. We have a horse that's being delivered to Italy, which was the dream. Right. We also have a second horse, mm -hmm. apparently, that's going to be delivered here in the United States. Tell yes. me about that. The second horse, or the second casting, the American horse, uh, is a part of a sculpture garden, the Meyer Gardens in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Mr. Meyer contacted us a couple of years ago with great interest with a horse and said, is it possible to have a second casting created for America? And inter interestingly enough, Charlie Dent had always said that he wanted to keep some sort of a copy of the horse here in America, maybe put it near the UN building in New York or down in the mall in Washington, D.C. And when we heard of this, we said, this is wonderful. It fits right into our plans. And Mr. D Meyer not only wanted to have a 24-foot horse for the sculpture garden, he wanted to create a Renaissance educational center for children. I understand there's um, a promise to Charlie. Yeah, I think one of the absolute unique qualities of this entire project is that a group of us promised Charlie Dent two weeks before he died that we would finish the horse and we'd get it to Italy. And I mean, we looked him right in the eye and said, we'll get it there, Charlie, don't worry about it. <clears throat> so he literally died knowing that the horse project would be finished. And I think it, it gave him a great sense of satisfaction to know that. Charles Dent projected his image of the Da Vinci horse onto the side of his barn in Fogelsville. This to show its size and make it real. Soon, the image and the common dream of two men, Da Vinci and Dent, found their own place in media throughout the world. Media that captured the imagination and focused the faith of thousands of people. Until finally, the dome, once filled with the collected Renaissance art of this modern day Quixote, was transformed into a treasure trove of media that in turn helped fund and realize the ultimate bronze sculpture, Il Cavallo. Italy's business and fashion capital. The city radiates in circles from Piazza del Duomo. The Duomo is the third largest cathedral in the world and the last of Italy's great Gothic structures. Started in 1386, it is still under construction. 135 spires, 2,000 statues and gargoyles. It is topped with a gold statue, protector of the city. It is hard to believe that Vittorio Emanuel Galleria is a shopping mall. Its magnificent glass ceiling protects shoppers and boutiques and belies its 1878 design. Shopping at the Galleria is not, however, mall shopping in the United States. From its shishi shops and marble floors to its mosaic artwork, Vittorio Emanuel is a unique tribute to Milan's style and grace. Milan and fashion, they are synonymous.
Milan, Mecca to shoppers of haute couture. Milan, home to Leonardo da Vinci for 18 years, where he came seeking glory in the court of Lodovico Sforza. It is here at Sforza's castle, built in the 14th century and now just a short walk from the Duomo, that Il Cavallo was to be placed 500 years ago. Sforza commissioned da Vinci to sculpt and cast a 24-foot bronze horse, largest in the world. But the fortunes of war saw the bronze for casting lost to cannon and the clay model da Vinci created in the Sforza gardens destroyed in target practice by the invading French, and the dream faded until the dream was lost. Santa Maria del Grazia, a 15th century Renaissance convent, originally stood alone in the fields far outside Milan. Today, this church and cloister are well within the busy and noisy metropolitan limits of Milan. Leonardo worked and rested here, Standing in the courtyard, one can feel the quiet strength of this cloister and sense how da Vinci would find the power to create perhaps his most famous work, Cenacolo, The Last Supper. Today, Leonardo and his work are memorialized and studied in Milan at the National Museum of Science and Technology bearing his name. Here, two days before the unveiling, Nina Akamu and other project members gave lectures to international groups about the process behind Il Cavallo. There are many people who deserve thanks for their contributions to this vision and project. Most important of all of, is, of course, Leonardo da Vinci. And then there is Charles C. Dent, a creative and tenacious visionary. And finally, I'd like to thank my mother, Tomiko Akamu, my father, Akui Akamu, who gave me the determination, focus, and resilience to keep this project and drive it to the finish. The San Siro Hippodrome, located within the city of Milan and just a short drive from its center, is home for Il Cavallo. The Italian government and the corporate sponsors supporting Il Cavallo have created a garden setting that is truly appropriate for the 24-foot, 15-ton bronze horse. Crowds gathered early before the ceremony. The quiet power of the veiled horse was soon lost in the noise and anticipation of press, officials, and international visitors. So that not only can we say that we've kept our promise, we can say to you, Charles, and I say to you, the horse is finished. Thank you. Finally, after speeches, dignitaries, pomp, ceremony, and national anthems, the dream was unveiled. Cavallo was home at last, home in Milan. How is the experience for you today? It's, uh, it's beyond words. It truly is. Um, it's as though I'm in a dream watching everyone, seeing everything. It's my separate reality again. I go to that place so I don't go into complete shock. <laughs> When it comes to the absolute best meats and imported foods around, Joe's Italian Marketplace stands out above the rest. They're your one-stop Italian gourmet and specialty delicatessen featuring imported pastas, cheeses, olive oils, and vinegar.